So, you know, even if you only have one plant in your house that you love, or if you grow a whole garden, it's going to be just something very uplifting to get you out of sorrow and sadness and back, you know, to your own truth within yourself and a little bit more joy. The thing about the plants is they're grounded. They're connected. They're connected to the earth. They're connected to their own spirit. And they do have a spirit. They're living beings. They've been here a thousand times longer than, than we have. We're the new kids on the block. They're, they're very evolved in, uh, in this world. And, and they, they have just such a sweet spirit, all of them. Thanks for tuning in to the Elevation Recovery Podcast, your hub for addiction recovery strategies, hosted by Chris Scott and Matt Finch. Thanks for joining us today on episode 224 of the show. We got a really special treat for you today, where I interview both of my parents, John Finch and Jane Richmond, who are the founders and operators of the Self Heal School of Herbal Studies and Healing, located here in San Diego, California, where they've been teaching classes on herbology, herbal medicine, nutrition, energy healing, meditation, and much more since the, I think, mid 1980s. My dad has been a teacher at various colleges like alternative health schools, massage colleges, Chinese medicine schools, and they teach out of their home here in San Diego, California. They've got a classroom. And today's topic is going to be on some of the top herbs to use for things like anxiety, depression, for liver health, lots of different herbs that you can use by themselves or in combination for things like quitting alcohol for things like quitting drugs, for early recovery, and for things like anxiety, depression, and much more. This is actually part one of the video. We didn't want to make it one super long episode. So today is part one, and the next episode that comes out, 225, is going to be the same guests, my parents, in the same location, their backyard and herb garden. And we're going to be continuing this discussion because they just had so many awesome herbs to talk about, and so many ways that you can take these herbs to improve your life. So without further ado, let's watch the interview. Today's topic is herbal medicine for drug and alcohol addiction recovery. Whether you're still battling a substance use disorder, whether you're recently off or somewhere in early recovery, or even years off of substances, this episode is going to teach you how to use specific herbs to rebuild your brain, your body, your heart, your spirit, your liver, and much more. And so my mom is the real expert on these specific herbs that she has today. And my dad is also a master herbalist expert, and he's gonna be chiming in as well. I'll probably chime in here and there also. But without further ado, let's start with the first herb on the list, or you can just go however you wanna do it. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm very happy to be able to share with you and I want to um, thank my beautiful son for inviting us. Uh, he's done a wonderful job of healing himself over the years and helping heal lots and lots of people. And that's kind of what John and I have done too in a different way. We have a um, herb school called Self Heal School of Herbal Studies. And we've been teaching since 1985. And uh, yeah, do you want to say something, John? Yeah, well... Um, herbs are very powerful at building the immune system, the nervous system, the heart, um, just all parts of our body. They're natural, they're safe, and they're effective. That's right. Um, I have a gal actually who's been on, uh, found that actually some of our herbs helped her more than Xanax did, which I thought was really pretty great. and. Uh, so let's start with herbs for the nervous system because probably, you know, I mean, all of us during COVID time, our nerves are a little bit shot. So I'd like to share with you some herbs that are really simple uh, to take. They're really simple to find, you know, to make tea with, to make tinctures with, um, and all, um, all of that. It's pretty simple. And uh, you've heard of this herb. It's not Greek or anything. It's actually chamomile. And chamomile is one of those herbs that's safe enough for babies. So it's definitely safe for you. 
Um, I think one of the problems with um, this world today is sleep and chamomile helps you sleep like a baby. Uh, we use, um, a lot of people think maybe it doesn't help you sleep because they get a tea bag from uh, the grocery store and put that in a cup of hot water. But actually, um, actually it does help you, but you, need, you may need to use three tea bags. <laughs> and you may need to let it sit for at least, uh, at least 10 minutes, maybe even a little bit longer. But definitely you should get a good night's sleep um, just from chamomile. A lot of people will get a good night's sleep from chamomile. Quick dovetail in here, super oh, fast. Yeah. Uh, when I first met Chris yeah. Scott, my co-host for this mm -hmm. podcast, who you guys know, mm -hmm. and you haven't met him yet, correct? Mm -mm. No. Well, he's visiting again. I want to make sure okay. that he, when he comes down in September, mm -hmm. uh, you guys get to visit with him. But he told me mm -hmm. that after he quit drinking, Chris would do four to six <laughs> tea bags of chamomile. There you go. And he'd steep <laughs> it for like 10, 15 minutes, uh -huh. and he would drink that. And I was like, whoa, because <laughs> I had heard you talk about chamomile yeah. and dad. And I never knew, like, I had tried it, but it didn't seem, like, powerful enough. So right. four to six tea bags, and it's so funny that you're talking about that, too. <laughs> yeah. So um, one caveat here is that uh, it's very uncommon, but some people are actually allergic to chamomile. If you're allergic to uh, Western ragweed, then you may also be allergic to chamomile. You could possibly go into anaphylactic shock from that. Uh, very uncommon, as I said, um, but it's something to know. And most people have had chamomile before and, if, and, and know they don't react to it. The other thing is that chamomile is a nervine, uh, mm -hmm. and which means it is high in minerals that act as electrolytes in the body. Mm. And that's how they nourish and balance your nervous system. So it's going to be really important to make sure that the chamomile you're obtaining is organically grown. Because co commercially grown uh, vegetables and herbs are grown in soils that are depleted of minerals. And so you're not going to get the effect you want if you get a poor quality uh, chamomile. Hmm. A, big, a big deficiency too when people are quitting <laughs> alcohol or benzos. Mm -hmm and certain other uh, drugs, whether they're natural, semi-synthetic or synthetic, is they'll have GABA deficiencies, gamma, gamma amino butyric acid or butyric acid. My dad probably knows how to pronounce it. GABA, so that's our brain's natural Valium. It is an inhibitive neurotransmitter that slows down brain signals uh, in the brain, so it kind of quiets your brain down. So it makes sense that drinking a big cup of it with tons of tea bags going to boost that GABA and then I didn't even know that it had electrolytes and I've been drinking electrolytes a lot either. lately <laughs> lots more water mm -hmm. so chamomile there you have it has electrolytes yeah. and you know this is an herb that you can definitely grow in your garden and then you'll be sure it's organic right <laughs> uh, I once had a big patch of uh, chamomile probably you know um, three feet by three feet and it was absolutely uh, gorgeous and it would call to me every day it would just it was so pretty out all the little yellow flowers and they would call to me every day and finally I just went over and went okay I'm not too busy I'm gonna come sit by you and when I sat by them I just went oh I get it you're looking at the Sun <laughs> and they were so happy so I call chamomile one of my happy herbs and it seems to affect a lot of children that way too you can give them chamomile baths. You can take a chamomile bath. You can drink a cup of chamomile tea. But it seems to be very soothing not only to the nervous system but to the stomach as well and just helps everybody calm the heck down, right? <laughs> How would one take yeah. a chamomile bath? Because uh -huh, almost yeah. daily I'm taking baths that have uh -huh. Epsom salts and other different types of salts like Dead Sea salt mm -hmm. and plant essential oils yeah with like a scented candle in there and mm. uh, beautiful instrumental music how would one take a chamomile bath or add that to the bath that I was talking about well you did mention essential oils and chamomile is an essential oil it's a little bit expensive don't ever buy um, chamomile that isn't organic uh, but the organic chamomile is a little expensive I remember once I didn't know how expensive it was and I took a whole tablespoon 
and put it in my bathtub. Oh. <laughs> that was glorious. <laughs> that was absolutely wonderful. I'd been in pain a lot in my back and it took the pain right out. It was great. It's anti-spasmodic, right? So, um, but you can actually just get the chamomile um, flowers themselves and put them in an old sock or you can put them in a bath herb bag that you buy or an old, you know, something that like that and tie it onto the faucet and then just run hot water through your bathtub through that and it'll be glorious. Nice. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you're purchasing essential oil of chamomile, <clears throat> you want to make sure that it's steam distilled because those are the good quality essential oils. Otherwise, essential oils can be derived uh, from the flowers uh, by using a solvent. It's not as mm -hmm. common with chamomile, but you, you want to make sure that it's organically grown and steam distilled. Uh, then you'll get the good quality uh, mm -hmm. essential oil. And as Jane said, it is fairly expensive. Yeah, but you can always just get a big bag of chamomile. You can order it on Amazon and basically get those flowers and put them, uh, you know, in a bath or a bag or something that you just tie onto the, your faucet and let run the hot water through it. And what about mm -hmm. that tea with like three to four tea bags, for example, yeah. for morning or daytime anxiety or re mental or physical restlessness <laughs> Absolutely. without going to sleep? Absolutely. Some For some people, chamomile is their total ally. I mean, it is the one herb that will make them feel incredible. And it's an herb that you can use as a simple. You can start off, if you're worried about it, you can always start off with one tea bag and see how it makes you feel or a few sips if you think you could possibly be allergic. I'm really not very worried about that in my practice. I've never seen anyone that was. Uh, but uh, basically, um, you can also make tea by, um, you know, just adding a big handful of chamomile flowers into your hot water and letting it sit without, um, you know, in hot water, not steaming or not, um, not simmering, simmering. <laughs> thank you John, not simmering or boiling but just sitting that's called steeping and uh, you can let it steep with the lid on for like 10 minutes and then drink it that way and it's quite great. Some people find it a little bit bitter and um, it is a little bit bitter so if you and that helps actually your stomach and uh, all your digestive processes as well. So in fact um, Sometimes we make it, mix it with peppermint, and that's called tummy tonic. A lot of times people will get upset stomachs just from feeling anxious. So a little bit of peppermint in that chamomile will be really super great. Yeah, people quitting alcohol and opioids yeah. commonly have stomach issues yeah, exactly. when they're detoxing. Yes, uh -huh. oh, it just feels so bad. Yeah. So anyway, right. How about we Hawthorne? love chamomile. I don't think I know anything about the next one on the list, Hawthorne. I've heard it, but yeah. I couldn't tell you a single thing about it. <laughs> Where does that play in, you guys? You want to talk about Hawthorne, John? Sure. So Crotagus oxycantha, mm -hmm. Hawthorne, Hawthorne berry, uh, is a superb heart herb. Um, uh -huh. Being a berry, a fruit, it, it's got a uh, high insoluble fiber which is going to lower your serum cholesterol levels um, and uh, also it strengthens the heart, Hawthorne. It's, uh, it, I had a student whose uh, dad was on heart medications and, and she made a tincture, soaked the Hawthorne berries mm -hmm. in, in some brandy <laughs> and uh, made a little heart tonic. And, uh, or you could do it in just glycerin. <laughs> yeah, if you don't want the alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. This is <laughs> no. Well, there's That's some good. people listening yeah. uh, are not addicted to alcohol at all. Right. They're just and opioids. they're not worried about it. It's like other drugs. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, and it works. It works fine in a tea also, or you can just grind it up and and, and take it in capsules. But it it, it strengthens the heart, and uh, yeah. So. Her dad, after taking this for about a week, uh, was able to get off, just a week, was able to get off his heart medication. Jeez. Now, if you do something like this, of course, you want to do it uh, under the supervision of your doctor instead of just cold turkey and on your heart medication. But uh, the, the Hawthorne is, is generally safer and more effective 
uh, than the pharmaceuticals for that. Yes, uh, Rosemary Gladstar, who basically is, uh, who kind of started uh, the renaissance of herbalism in America today, was our teacher. And she really recommended Hawthorne for the heart and also for the blood vessels. Uh, I might mention, though, just one disclaimer for it. If you're on heart medication, um, Hawthorne sometimes has been known to um, interfere with the heart medication on some interesting level. So um, she believes that you can take it with heart medication. I always say be safe. Um, ask your doctor, you know, give it a small try. Always take um, herbs uh, four hours away from any medication that you might be on and that's a good way to not get too much interaction. So, but Hawthorne is a wonderful herb too uh, to put in your nighttime tea, um, even along with chamomile if you want. And basically, it holds your spirit inside your heart. That's what they say about Hawthorne. It keeps your spirit from wandering around and puts it back where it belongs inside your heart um, chakra. So I love Hawthorne. I think it's a beautiful plant. It's certainly a sacred plant um, for the Celtics and it grows really well out here in the northern um, in the northern states uh, especially up in oregon and northern california maybe does it grow back east i'm sure it does grows in england like crazy <laughs> yeah it's actually yeah. a it's actually a hedge the word haw means hedge and it has thorns on it Hed, uh, hedge with thorn hawthorn mm -hmm. it's also like chamomile a nerving mm -hmm. so it's also gonna uh mm -hmm nourish and balance your nervous system. I didn't know that. Good. Wonderful. Yeah, Hawthorne tastes great too. It just, it's, it's one of those herbs, um, the same way you would take it uh, as chamomile, you would let it, you would let it simmer maybe a little bit longer. A lot of people, unless steep. it's crushed, you would actually steep it or you could simmer it because um, it is a hard berry. So take your pick on that one. <laughs> A lot of herbalists have a lot of big ideas on how you should do everything. And you can learn yourself what works best for you. It's pretty user friendly. And mm -hmm. then is Hawthorne kind of like motherwort? Motherwort, the one thing I know about it is that it gladdens your heart. Oh, that's, that's all sweet. I know. <laughs> well, motherwort is probably my favorite herb for when, um, before I go to the doctor. <laughs> to get my blood pressure <laughs> because it actually lowers blood pressure pretty fast. It can stop a racing heart and calm it down. Not stop it, but calm it down. Um, it can, uh, it's super bitter, so it's also great for the liver. And um, I love, I really love motherwort because when I use it, I usually combine it with some lavender glycerin to make it taste better. But even, even so, you don't have to. And I, I would usually use it. It's pretty bitter. It's pretty strong as a tea, but you can definitely drink it as a tea. You can also uh, make it in a glycerin, or you can, definitely, um, you can definitely put it in some tincture. However you do it, um, you know, a big swig of it uh, or a big cup of it basically will make you feel like you can handle a hundred people coming to your house even though you've been working with people all day. <laughs> I'm gonna, if you guys have some in your apothecary, yes. I'd like to bring home a sample after this. Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, and we've had, I've, like I said, I have had women just give up their Xanax. They don't even need it because they're on motherwort and uh, glycerin. In fact, I've had a schizophrenic have, be able to give up her anti-anxiety meds because she was on motherwort and glycerin so and after a while you you kind of calms your body in general and you get used to being more calm so i think it's a pretty incredible incredible herb myself especially again if you have heart palpitations or you know racing heart or any of that yeah one mm -hmm. thing to understand though <clears throat> is that um, what's going to make it good for your digestion is in fact the bitter flavor so it's probably better to kind of get over, you know, making it sweet. Because uh, if you make it sweet, the, the receptors on your tongue 
or send a message <laughs> to the brain that stimulate all your digestive organs. So you're actually better off uh, having that <laughs> bitter flavor. Well, glycerin is actually not sugar, so it works pretty good that way, right? But it's still sweet, and it's yeah. the flavor receptor <laughs> we on, disagree. The, on, on the tongue that uh, sends the message to the brain. It's, it doesn't know if it has calories or not, but it's the flavor <laughs> that's the trigger. You can also put it with licorice. Um, that's a little bit sweet as well, and it's another adaptogen that's really pretty great. Are yeah, you going to disagree again? <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I, I could, but... And the nice thing about licorice, that's we're funny. talking about the Chinese uh, root tonic, Glyceriza glabra, and not those uh, licorice, black licorice sticks. Um, that, that That's a candy. Uh, licorice is actually a, um, a tonic, a yin tonic. It's strengthening and building to the two most at-risk organs in our body, which are the liver and the adrenals. And... Uh, you know, of course, alcohol uh, really is, you know, damaging to the liver. And, you know, people that are withdrawing have issues with, with stress. And that's that's what impacts uh, the, that stress load is what impacts and, and damages the adrenals. Ron Teagarden, too, the founder of Dragon mm -hmm. Herbs, master Chinese Wonderful herbalist. Herbs. Uh -huh. yeah. He often talks about licorice as a way to not only those benefits you guys were talking about, but also to relieve and reduce uh, muscle tension really? up in the neck, trapezoids, mm -hmm. shoulder areas up here. Well, I've never noticed that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Chinese call licorice that? the great harmonizer. It's in almost all their patent remedies. Mm -hmm. It balances the harsher effects uh, of some of the, uh, you know, stronger and more bitter uh, Chinese root tonics. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful, wonderful herb. Uh, we have another one here too, uh, lemon balm. Lemon balm is probably one of my all time, absolutely favorite herbs for calming people down. Um, anyone that gets headaches regularly, anyone who gets stomach aches, anyone whose heart needs to feel a little bit lighter and more youthful um, will definitely benefit from lemon balm and also just from calming, you know, so just that whole nerving effect, but it's a digestive effect. It has a brain effect also, and that brain effect is to just, um, I don't know, uh, just make your brain feel a little bit more clear, a little bit more youthful, um, and I don't know why that is exactly, but Dioscorides was talking about it. He's an old Greek um, herbalist from way back. What do you... It's an antiviral too, right? Oh gosh, yes, and it's an antiviral. Thank you. It's like a mild sedative. <laughs> I yes. can't remember if it boosts GABA. It's been a while since I've talked about it. It relieves that. fever. Yeah. So I use it in a lot of my formulas for people that are have gotten COVID. So, and it oh, works really well. Yeah. The, uh, the, <laughs> first, uh, the first addiction detox supplement I ever saw, mm -hmm. was probably like 12 mm -hmm. years ago, Right. I saw it online when I was living in mm -hmm. upstate New York Yeah. when I was addicted to opioids and it was a formula, it's out of business now, but it was called Withdrawal Ease mm -hmm. and one of the main ingredients was lemon balm and nice. it showed like mm -hmm. the benefits for the stomach, for you know the nervous system and for other things and that, that was a for great headaches. addition yeah. and I tried it and, and that product worked really good <laughs> back then. Yeah, it's the one herb that helps my daughter every time. She was a very sensitive growing up, very nervous, and she'd get headaches pretty easily and stomach aches. She'd get really bad migraines. And I found if I just made her a cup of fresh lemon balm uh, tea and I would go pick it out of my garden, I could show you some right now, except uh, some of the critters really like my lemon balm. <laughs> Around here, they love it. <laughs> I have healthy bugs. <laughs> yeah, what about Insects. you, Dad, on lemon balm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on lemon balm. Uh, Melissa officinalis in the mint family. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite herbs for sure. Uh, they say lemon balm is for melancholy. Yes, for finding yourself for in life situations yeah. you're not ready to accept. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, antidepressant, as we had said, antiviral. It's, it's also a nerving, uh, like the chamomile and the, and the hawthorn berry. Uh, so it's relaxing to the body, nourishing the nervous system. And uh, yeah, the essential oil for this, this herb is really expensive. Um, mm -hmm. But um, 
but uh, very, very, very effective. The best way to do it really uh, is is grow it yourself. <coughs> excuse me, grow it yourself, because <laughs> when it dries, um, it, it it's going to lose. <laughs> You know, once the, all the water is evaporated out of it, a, a good portion of the essential oil is going to be lost. And the fact that there's not much essential oil in it in the first place is what makes that uh, essential oil so darn expensive. But, um, you know, it, it can actually even be vaporized. And you can vaporize the fresh, uh, the fresh leaves of that. Uh, you don't have to dry it to, to burn it to smoke it. Uh, but you can just put it in a vaporizer, the fresh leaves in the vaporizer will dry it out enough uh, to uh, release the, the vapors from that and the essential oil. And uh, I actually was um, hired by two NASA engineers to conduct a herbal vapor therapy study. <laughs> and uh, one of the herbs that we did, used in that study was lemon balm. And that scored really high. People really, really liked it, you know. Uh, in, in the vaporizer, and that was even using the dry herb. But my preference is is using the fresh. Yes, and um, one other thing, my daughter and I fell so in love with lemon balm, and then one day, uh, years later, I was reading this little tea book, and it was talking about King Louis the, I think from the 1600s, whichever one that was in France, <laughs> basically had proclaimed uh, that they should grow lemon balm in every garden and that's exactly what Callie and I have been saying about um, mm. lemon balm when we were in love with it when she was young we were saying wow this should be in everyone's garden and then we read that the king of France had proclaimed that so mm -hmm. we were pretty like oh my gosh <laughs> that was good validation um, I do want to say too that you can uh, um, lemon balm really responds to you talking with it and telling it what you want to do with that herb. Uh, one night, I remember when Matt, if I can tell this little story, he had gone back to um, he had gone back to New York because he his um, girlfriend was having a baby and she wanted him to be the baby daddy. And it was Christmas and I was concerned about him going back and I was pretty sad. So I took the lemon balm, some fresh lemon balm that I still had in the garden and I put it in a cup of water and set it out in the moonlight. When you set herbs in the moonlight, it kind of helps them become um, kind of more to heal your emotions. So I did that and I let it sit for about an hour and brought it in. I warmed it up. And what I found was every time I took a sip of it, my heart just sort of opened and I wasn't sad. I went, oh, that feels so good, you know? And then another thing with lemon balm, you can actually take a bath in it as well. And I took a bath in fresh lemon balm once and it wouldn't let me get out of the bathtub. <laughs> it was so relaxing and I felt like I had a moon goddess sitting on my bathtub just saying, oh, I would try to get up and she'd say, oh, no, 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 you sit right back down there. So if you can't relax, <laughs> Get in a bath with the moon balm, with the moon, with the lemon balm. Ooh, moon balm, that's a cool <laughs> moon name. Moon balm, yeah. And then, uh, and drink that tea, and you'll be feeling pretty darn good. Okay? Yeah, and then lavender. Lavender. Do you want to start with I lavender? I use lavender daily. Oh, you do? What do you do, Matt? <laughs> in the baths, I oh, put lavender really yeah. either in the bath or yeah. in the diffuser, peppermint and lavender while I'm working. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so lavender is another mint family plant. Uh, a lot of mm -hmm. people just really love lavender. Yes. I, I, I put it in mm -hmm. my, uh, I make an herbal uh, beauty cream and I put it in there. Uh, lavender is uh, another antidepressant, another herb yeah. that, that's, that's good for finding yourself in life situations that are difficult. Um, it's, uh, we've extracted it in glycerin before because it's fairly bitter. Um, but um, I was out in the yard one day um, and Jane took her um, pre-clinic class out there to, to make a flower essence actually with some, some, some herb. And I was sitting on the bench and one of my students came over to me and said, what are you doing, John? And I, and I said, what does it look like I'm doing? She said, well, it looks like you're sitting there with lavender flower shoved up your nose. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> and, 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 she, <laughs> and she said, what are you doing that for? I said, why don't you try it and see? <laughs> Uh, a few hours later, um, she came up to me after Jane's class was over 
and she said, John, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. This has been the best day of my life. Because <laughs> every time she breathed in through her nose, that was that uh, essential oil was going to that limbic region of the brain, the mm -hmm. uh, deep memory, and and just giving her that incredible experience. By then, of course, I'd long taken mine out, but um, yeah, lavender is is really incredible in that way. Yes, and you know it's such a quick fix if you have lavender and glycerin, <clears throat> or and um, it's such a quick fix to just take a little bit internally and just feel so much calmer. Uh, you don't have to do it with the motherwort. That's just kind of how my favorite thing. Um, but you can do it just with the lavender and glycerin. You can put a little lavender in tea. A lot of people like chamomile and lavender tea at night before they go to bed. Um, for some people, the lavender is stimulating. Um, so really? to take a bath in lavender at night will refresh them and wake them up instead of making them drowsy. <laughs> So before you're counting on lavender to put you to sleep at night, uh, you better try it at some other time um, so it doesn't keep you awake. Um, I love um, even a little lavender on your wrist sometimes can help you sleep. And sometimes it can just just help you feel better about everything. Lavender is pretty incredible herb, yeah. And they, you know, they have lavender farms and those are really fun to go visit. We have one here in San Diego. And uh, it's just, you know, it just makes you feel happy. You know, these are, we've been talking about some pretty happy herbs, but lavender really helps you feel peace as well. You know, just a lot of peace. And it's very refreshing. It'll make you feel fresh. So if you've been around a lot of negative energy, you might want even a spritzer of lavender essential oil. Mm. And then you can put it around you after you've been dealing with a lot of, um, trauma or negative energy. A lot of times um, at Christmas when people come to our house, I'll spray them. I'll either sage them uh, with, you know, some smoke from the white sage plant or I'll spray them with some lavender essential oil. And both work really good for helping them just kind of relax and uh, be a little clearer, you know, not feel so upset. Um, Oh, I know a lavender story. Can I tell it? Yeah. Or do we have please. time? Please, you know what we do. <laughs> I tell this one a lot um, at our gift making workshop in December. But uh, when it, when I was younger and I had and all these kids like Matt and Benny and Callie were all my little kids and you know then we you know we'd host Christmas at our house because we had the big house and um, you know our family would come down from Northern California and my sister would come over and then my sister-in-law would come over and all their families and I remember one uh, Christmas it was uh, Christmas Eve and I woke up and I was tired and grumpy and uh, everyone had left <laughs> the whole house was a complete disaster and I had so much to do besides cooking now I had to clean everything all over again I was really irritated and I left the house in a big huff and uh, I was really mad. I was walking down the hill, you know, kind of mumbling under my breath. And then I saw some flowers and I thought, oh, if I could just get some flowers, then I know I'll be okay, you know? So then I walked down to the little herb shop down the street from us, but, which was owned by our students. And uh, our friend Arisha was there and I was telling her the story and how grumpy I was. and. She kept uh, making me smell every different kind of essential oil of lavender there was until I finally calmed down <laughs> and wasn't angry anymore. And I called home to tell John I need some flowers, but he wasn't there. And I just, I walked to the beach and I sat down on a hill and I uh, meditated and um, Santa Claus showed up and I thought, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that hadn't happened before. The spirit of Santa Yeah, the Claus. spirit of Santa. And he said, well, what do you want for Christmas, little girl? And I said, well, I'd just like to get some flowers. And he goes, well, that's easy. And I went, okay. <laughs> I just, you know, and I wasn't thinking much about it. It just seemed like that was weird. Okay, fine. So I walked back to the herb shop and uh, I walked back home. And when I got home, um, 
no sooner had I got home than John walked up the stairs with a huge bouquet of flowers and um, to this day he tells me it was a little birdie told him not Arisha <laughs> <laughs> was it a birdie or was it Arisha <laughs> there was a birdie <laughs> okay <laughs> So anyway, there was Santa sending me flowers, and then my sister came in and brought me flowers. My daughter-in-law called, and uh, she said, how are you doing, Jane? And before that, I said, well, you know, I'm grumpy. She said, well, come on. I think I called her from the herb shop. She said, well, come on home. We already cleaned the whole house, and we brought bought you flowers. And then my sister-in-law came over, and she brought flowers, and my daughter, I'm uh, not my daughter, my other sis, my actual sister came over and brought me flowers. <laughs> and then my little boy came over, Benny, and he was like nine years old and he came running up the stairs and he was so cute and he handed me these three kind of limp roses <laughs> and he said, Grandma, I mean Mom, <laughs> I forgot who I am, he said, uh, the lady at the herb shop, I only had enough money for one rose for you, but she gave me three at the flower shop, at the flower shop. yeah. So that was so cute <laughs> and I cried, <laughs> it was very sweet. And I thought, wow, next year I better ask Santa Claus for something uh, even better, you know? <laughs> I'm doing an online so, yeah, course right now from mm -hmm. uh, a lady that's Australian. Yeah. And her course is great. It's about energy. It's about basically, gosh, it's kind of like an entrepreneurship course, but it's more like kind of like how to have a soul-based business right. type style. Oh, nice. And she loves flowers so much. Mm -hmm. I forget her exact favorite kind, but she has like a flower budget. Right. And even though they die, I think it's like $25 a week, she just makes sure she always has fresh flowers because it right. makes her feel way Happy. better being around <laughs> that, those types of Happy. things in her home and in mm -hmm. her office. How yeah. about, I keep thinking that says scallops, but that's skullcap. <laughs> it does, but we were just talking about the rose. Oh, yeah. Now, rose. you need to take a rose bath for sure. You know, that's going to be incredible. And you can buy roses online pretty easily. Again buy organic roses and if you take a rose bath you're going to feel very loved and very happy and you can definitely put them in tea and it'll just very be super soothing you want to say something John well rose opens the heart mm -hmm. that's that's why a lot of times you know uh, guys will give their <laughs> wives or girlfriends uh, you know a dozen roses for example um, that would be nice <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah and um, Actually, the, uh, the rose flower, the vibrational aspect of that as a flower essence, is for love of life. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, if, if you take that flower essence, uh, a few drops of that, uh, and say the affirmation, I love life, then if you, were feeling, <laughs> if you were feeling like life sucks and then you die, in a very short time mm -hmm. you're going to feel gratitude for having uh, breath come into you and keeping you alive. Nice. Absolutely. Um, you know, um, our uh, nephew just uh, died. He was 34 and he just died. And, you know, people were bringing flowers and flowers and flowers. And, you know, it really helped to have those flowers around. It really took care of people's hearts and made them feel like they could, you know, just bear it a little bit more. Very sweet. Um, at so the, at the yeah. inpatient treatment programs, ahead, yeah. where people go yeah. residential treatment, whether it's 30 days mm -hmm. or 60 days or 90 days, something like that. It's often in like medical facility settings where there's fluorescent lights. Oh, you yeah. know, not a lot of beauty. Um, doctors and nurses in outfits. What if there was like a, a treatment program? Right that was in beautiful, like five acres of beautiful forest yes. and land. <laughs> and there was just giant gardens, ga rose gardens and flower gardens, just gardens and gardens and streams and koi fish ponds, mm -hmm. just everywhere and like gong music going around, just like okay. a super peaceful mm -hmm. place with like elixir bars doing like That'd Chinese tonic herb elixirs. and. <laughs> And good organic food. Yeah, I think we all need these things and should basically give these gifts of nature to ourselves, whether you drink the teas or whether you walk in the trees, you know, um, you're going to get healing. Like we're sitting under this beautiful pine tree right now and pine trees definitely um, give you a feeling and an energy of peace 
and they also help you deal with uh, guilt so just being in pine trees can relieve so much um, trauma that people have been through and uh, yeah I think Matthew has just the absolute right idea so walks in the park I know in Balboa Park here in San Diego we have a Japanese garden and that garden has cherry blossoms in it and cherry blossoms um, are so sweet they have so much love um, you feel unity you feel peace and you know almost every flower has some kind of um, you know some kind of essence that's been attached to it that like zinnias I'm looking at right now or are for childlike joy and peace so you know even if you only have one plant in your house that you love or if you grow a whole garden it's going to be just something very uplifting to get you out of sorrow and sadness and back you know to your own truth within yourself and a little bit more joy what do you think Johnny yeah well the thing about the plants is they're grounded they're connected they're connected to the earth they're connected to their own spirit and they do have a spirit they're living beings they've been here a thousand times longer than than we have we're the new kids on the block they're, they're very evolved in uh, in this world and and they they have just such a sweet spirit all of them that just just being around plants that's why if you go for a walk in nature you you, you, you almost always come back feeling better because you've been influenced by these by these plant beings that are in harmony with with the nature around them and with themselves they're grounded and connected and that's a great part of our dis-ease which we call disease is that we're not grounded we're not connected and a large part of how the plants heal us is by reconnecting us to the earth and to our own spirit some of the herbs we left off before, I think it was for your heart, herbs for your heart mostly, and herbs for uh, nervines and natural sedatives and mm -hmm. mood boosters and lots of various actions. So we're going to finish up those, then we're going to go into adaptogens, one of my mm -hmm. favorite topics, and there's mm -hmm. lots of different wonderful adaptogens. And so with that, uh, my mom, this is Jane Richmond, and that's my dad, John Finch, they're the founder founders of Self Heal School of Herbal Studies and Healing here in San Diego, California, where they've been teaching herbology and other natural medicine modalities for several decades here in Southern California. So you can start us off, Mom, and thanks so much. Oh, great. Well, we certainly enjoyed sharing yesterday, and um, we're happy to continue. We just can't, couldn't get it all in. So we're going to talk a little bit about a couple more nervines that I think are really super important for building your nervous system. Uh, skullcap, in fact, is one of the herbs we're going to talk about right now. Um, skullcap, um, basically it is a nervine that really helps you sleep, but it restores the nervous system and it's been used probably for centuries to help um, with uh, uh, delirium tremens and did insomnia. I say that right yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, insomnia and you know just restoring the nervous system sort of if you're jittery or shaky or just fried you know skullcap is definitely the herb for you and I know John uh, loves this herb especially do you want to say anything about it John? sure uh, skullcap uh, scutellaria latera flora is a really beautiful herb in the first place but what we say about skullcap is that it quiets nerve fire. So in the last episode, we talked about nervines and uh, that, that they contain electrolytes. They contain uh, minerals, and minerals are conductors, which means they conduct electricity. And our nervous system, in fact, is electrochemical. And so the, the nervines uh, provide these minerals as long as the herb is grown organically or harvested from the wild then it'll have these minerals in there and it, it helps to quiet nerve fire mm -hmm. so it's, it's something that's really good for withdrawals or for uh, stress um, and uh, there's a product called uh, 
It's mm -hmm. from the company Gaia Herbs. I have mm -hmm. no affiliation with them whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if it's still on the market, but it's called Sound Sleep. Right. And I'm mm -hmm. pretty, it was either that product or another one. They, they used to have one called Serenity. And they were liquid phyto caps. So I guess mm -hmm. extracts of mm -hmm. herbal nervines. And I think the, the combination I'm talking about had skull cap, mm. valerian, passion flower, Oh, yeah. maybe lemon balm in there too and kava <laughs> and so I've used that before for coming off back way back in the day used that for coming off of alcohol or for anxiety and I remember uh, one of my friends she was coming off Xanax and fast forward many years this is when I first started being a recovery coach and she was asking me you know what are some Xanax alternatives I told her to go down to the people's food store co-op and see if they have Gaia Herbs Serenity mm -hmm. she went and got that and she just took one one of those soft gel phyto caps three times a day and she said it was so powerful that she was <laughs> able to easily taper off and she was on a small dose of Xanax daily it wasn't in anything mm -hmm. serious uh, but then yeah I've recommended those different types of formulas to a lot of people <laughs> I don't know much about skull cap though uh, yeah, Skullcap is definitely in my sleep formula every night, and uh, it just quiets the mind. A lot of people say it's good for meditation, too. If you drink it before you meditate, your meditation will be a lot smoother, a lot quieter, and a lot of people have that racing mind at night before they go to bed, so Skullcap is another herb that really helps with that. But uh, Matthew ma mentioned passion flower, and that is one of my all-time favorite herbs uh, for sleep and anxiety and just feeling better in general, feeling incredible. Um, I know when Matt was young, <laughs> uh, he, um, I did some cards for him and he was asking me about things and he, he picked an, a card from the herbal tarot deck and it was passion flower. So I made him up like a little one ounce tincture and told him to take like a dropper full before bed and then to get the energy of that to just take three drops. Um, anyway, so Matt drew, drew the passion flower herb and then, you know, I, I made his bed before he went to bed and then in the morning he said to me, Mom, that was the best sleep I ever had. How did you make my bed last night so great? <laughs> And I had to laugh because I knew it was the passion flower. And actually, um, I'd heard that story again at some convention I was at. I had a gal uh, who was sleeping next door, and I'd given everybody passion flower. And she was telling her friend, she said, You know, your bed is so much more comfortable than mine. <laughs> so, passion flower really, really helps you relax deeply and gives you that kind of just full on deep sleep. There's probably you know, a lot of people who have studied um, all the dream states and things like that that could tell you about passion flower and sleep. But that's all. That's basically what I've heard. People just love it. You also, you also kind of have a lot of dreams that are um, technicolor, but they always seem very uplifting to me. Anyway, when I do uh, passion flower, what about you, John? Dad knows a lot about passion flower. Yeah, I bet he does. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, there's there's two passion flowers. Pass Passiflora uh, incarnata is, is the medicinal one. The other passion flower has a fruit that sometimes people, pass mm -hmm. Passiflora edulis, mm -hmm. they, they grow for the fruit. But incarnata is the one that helps people sleep. It's interesting how it works. Um, so the, the, the neurotransmitter that puts us to sleep is actually serotonin. And serotonin is a short-acting, dark-activated neurotransmitter. So in other words, when it gets dark, our brain releases that. You're talking it, about melatonin or serotonin? Yeah, either one. Okay. I mean, they're, they're, they, they convert into each other. Right. So, um, so uh, wh when that neurotransmitter is released, it, it, it tells you sleep, sleep, sleep. But then an <laughs> enzyme comes and takes that apart, it's done its job. Uh, that enzyme is, uh, is uh, monoamine oxidase. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what passion flower does is it 
inhibits that enzyme. It's an MAOI, a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, so that it actually binds with the, um, that enzyme and, and binds with it for like four or five hours, and then it releases it so that that enzyme goes ahead and takes, the, takes that neurotransmitter apart, and you wake up in the morning with no drug hangover um, and, and a good night's sleep. I want to do a little disclaimer at this point as well. So if you're on like Ambien or any of the other drugs that they use for sleep, don't combine them with herbs. Um, it's just, it gives you um, just too strong of an effect. Um, so that's kind of my words of wisdom for that. And passion flower is mm -hmm. a natural anxiolytic, antidepressant, sleep aid, mm -hmm. tummy tonic aid and it boosts natural levels of GABA and then serotonin and dopamine, I believe, <laughs> but mostly GABA. <laughs> yes, I had one client um, who, passion flower was her complete ally. She had come to me because her dad had died and she'd gone to a psychiatrist who kept trying to give her, because she would found that she was just crying all the time. And he tried to give her all these different, um, you know, pharmaceutical drugs. Uh, but one of them just didn't register with her, so she wanted to see if there was anything herbal that would help. Uh, she was actually a nurse, and the drug that he had given her was making her feel like jumping off her motorcycle and chopping off <laughs> people's heads. <laughs> and she said, Jane, that's not like me. I'm a nurse. <laughs> so I'm laughing in a way, but, it, you know, I kind of wonder about other people that are taking, you know, sometimes... A pharmaceutical work will work for you and sometimes it won't so you have to really work with your doctor right anyway she was able to get off it uh, because of passion flower and uh, she was able to function and be normal in the world and all that and she just fell in love with the plant she actually picked the leaves off of uh, she actually picked the leaves off of it uh, of the one with the fruit and did just fine with that and made her own teas at home so either way it kind of works yeah and do you recommend you drink a lot of passion flower tea before bed mixed with other things as well do you yeah, still do that i usually uh, mix up my you know sometimes i'll do some herbs uh, before bed and I'll, then i'll change them out but passion flower is definitely one of my favorite to have in the herb tea yep okay cool and then mm -hmm. we got uh, valerian yeah and you can take passion flower just on its own too it's just fine uh, yeah, we have valerian. I'm just going to let John talk about that for a while because that's like his favorite herb. Uh -huh. It smells like dirty socks, by the way. <laughs> dirty gym socks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So valeria, valerian officinalis, uh, we use the root of that. And um, it, it, it does uh, taste pretty bad, but it's a very effective uh, nerving and sedative and muscle relaxer. So again, the muscle yeah. relax, relaxing property antispasmodic is partly due to the calcium in it, high amount of calcium. Mm. But again, if it's not organically grown or harvested from the wild, those minerals uh, won't be in it. So you want to make sure you always get high quality herbs. Otherwise, um, it's uh, something that uh, is good skeletal muscle relaxer. So if you have cramps mm -hmm. in your muscles, it's really excellent for that. And if that's mm -hmm. something that's been preventing you from sleeping well, it'll, it'll affect that. At the same time, it's a nerving, and we've been talking about nerving, herbs with minerals in them that help with uh, your nervous system. And if you're withdrawing from alcohol or drugs, then you have extra stress, which gives you more nerve excitement that more nerve excitement actually burns out the minerals in your synapses. Um, and, and so, so um, you know, the term is burned out, really, and it's a very appropriate term. Um, whereas if you reinforce, if you supplement herbs um, that provide those minerals, then um, it, it keeps that nerve fire uh, more calm and steady. And, and you don't get so jumpy and irritated and irritable. It's interesting, they did a, did a study with valerian, uh, and you would think that it would, you know, 
since it's a central nervous system depressant, mm -hmm. uh, that it would slow down your reaction time. But they actually did a study where, I, like when I took driver training in high school, we had a little uh, trailer we went in and you had a little steering wheel and <laughs> all that stuff, like a car. And at, at one point they, they had a reaction test where you saw a red light and then you hit the brake and they, it measured the amount of time it took uh, f from that red light to that brake. And they found actually that people on Valerian had faster reaction times. Whoa. I was a professional drummer and um, Valerian was one of the herbs that I, mm -hmm. that, that I took in combination with uh, ashwagandha and some other things to, to help me drum and, and it, it really did help. So the thing is, if you do too much Valerian, you're going to end up with a drug hangover in the morning. <clears throat> You'll be kind of groggy. Mm -hmm. And so you, you want to watch the dosage on that. It doesn't take a whole lot mm -hmm. uh, to get you there. I love valerian, um, but too much of it doesn't work for me. It wakes me up. So that is a little problem with this herb. You have to kind of see if it's an herb for you. But it really relaxes your, your whole musculoskeletal system. It's very anti-spasmodic. And... Um, it also, um, I found that even one drop of a tincture of uh, valerian was enough to help me have a whole sound night's sleep. Just one drop. Anything more than that, and it seemed like it was just too much. <laughs> but um, a lot of people think that valerian is actually um, what they make Valium with, but it's not true. <laughs> it's not true. Well, it boosts, uh, Valerian boosts natural GABA. That's right. And GABA's mm -hmm. our brain's endogenous uh -huh. neuropharmacies. Yes. Valium, endogenous Valium. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool. So definitely you could use it in replace of something like with Valium, but not with Valium, right? <laughs> A lot of people want to get even more relaxed, but you know, really don't mix these herbs, especially valerian, so strong. And so. What, I, what I say about valerian is that uh -huh, it's, yeah. it's not reliable. Mm. And, and by that I mean valerian has two separate uh, uh, compounds in it, valipotriates they're called. <laughs> one, one set actually nourishes and supports the sympathetic nervous system, which is more in dominance when you're uh, awake. And one of them uh, supports uh, the parasympathetic nervous system, which is more in dominance when you're asleep or in meditation. Mm -hmm. And so depending on your biorhythm, where your biorhythm is at at the time, valerian can actually wake you up, even if it's if you take it at night. So, so it's like a double direction, like some of the Chinese herbs have right. a double direction. It could give you energy depending on your physiology and biochemistry mm -hmm. and state, or it can make you more relaxed, or it can make you kind of relaxed and energized at the same time, which is my favorite. It's pretty terrific in that way. It does work that way as well, Matt, if you take it during the day. Some people really suggest, some herbalists suggest that if you want to use valerian for sleep, that you actually take um, like a dropper full or less um, three times a day during the day, and then you're more likely to be healing your nervous system and be more ready for sleep at night. So that's pretty great too, yeah. I do want to mention though the sympathetic nervous system. That reminds me of my other incredibly favorite herb which is called uh, Gota Cola. And uh, that herb works on your sympathetic nervous system. So you can drink Gota Cola at night. It's actually a brain tonic and helps you think a lot better. So I, I often have uh, Gota Cola before I try to teach class at night. You know, I might be a little tired. Um, you know, I might be a little bit, um, you know, feeling a little bit my age on occasion. <laughs> so I'll have some gota cola and a little bit of peppermint with it and a little bit of rosemary as a brain tonic. And the great thing about it is I can drink it, be really clear and be able to think and study at night. But then um, it also helps me sleep, <laughs> which is kind of amazing if you think about it. So. Um, it's a great, uh, what, would you call it an adaptogen, John, or a... It's, it's, it's more of a brain tonic. <laughs> it it's, is a brain tonic. It's actually yeah. indigenous to uh, India in this surrounding uh, terrain. 
it, uh, the elephants eat it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a favorite browse, what they call of the elephants. And um, they say, due to that, do we know elephants that have long memories? Mm -hmm. You take an elephant somewhere, and like 20 years later, he can find that place again. It, and also long life. It's, it's actually... Or remember you. It's, mm -hmm. it, it is an adaptogen in that sense that it's a, a life extension herb. They actually did studies in India with school children and found that it raised their IQ, their intelligence quotient, made them what? actually smarter. Mm -hmm. In India, they, they call the, the sacred bull, the Brahma bull. Brahma, of course, is, is one of the, uh, is, is the creator, their name for the creator, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. But uh, they call uh, Godakola mm -hmm. Brahmi. So that's the sacred herb and the oldest herb tradition in the world, which is Ayurveda. Mm -hmm. So they, it's revered there and for very good reason. How does that compare? Is it in the same category, uh, more or less, or similar to ginkgo biloba? Uh, it, it has different, the, the ginkgoloids and bilobaloids in ginkgo work slightly differently, but it has the same effect. It's like a brain tonic. It's thing. a brain tonic, exactly. Oh, sweet. Yeah, they're both brain tonics, but um, valerian, I mean, uh, Godacola does have that kind of mellowing effect on your whole nervous system, so you're... You're kind of relaxed and you're kind of uh, awake at the same time until it's time for you to go to sleep and then it just supports that too. To me that, that herb is super magical um, and we use it in our clinic a lot for so many things. Yeah. All right, how about reishi or reishi? Yeah, reishi is another, um, you know, it's not exactly a nerving. We kind of finished with the nerving herbs for now, although there's many. Uh, many and um, but reishi I really love it's sort of another heart herb it really helps your whole cardiovascular system um, I remember this uh, one guy passed it around our preclinic he'd made a pretty strong tea of reishi right and that's a mushroom and he um, an ancient Chinese mushroom and John will the mushroom give, of immortality well, well yeah by the way <laughs> thanks Matt <laughs> anyway uh, he, you know, he passed it around. We all drank it and we all went, oh my gosh, we felt, we felt like we had just experienced God. <laughs> I took 40 drops of wild yeah. red uh, reishi 40. extract wow. from dragon herbs mm -hmm. right before I drove over here. You did? Wow. Well, it's only two droppers full. Well, I recommend okay. it as three. <laughs> I'm relaxed. Yeah, reishi um, has an, it just seems to... Um, it also has a great affinity for your immune system. Um, it opens your crown chakra, which I think is really important in recovery. A lot of people feel kind of lost in this life, and it's, it's one that really connects you and makes you feel when you're walking around like you're already in meditation. So what meditation is for is to kind of connect you with yourself, your deepest self, and also with your creator. So reishi kind of does that for you. Gives you a little hop, skip, and a jump. I like it um, in powdered caps myself, but as tea, it's pretty incredible. Um, I do remember Amanda McQuay Crawford, who's, I'll give her a shout out. She's my incredible herb teacher. You can find her probably online. We'll put in the show and, notes uh, the episode yeah. that I interviewed oh, her yeah, too, because she's great. been on the show. Yeah, and she told us the story of reishi, um, and she told it so much better than I will, but I love, um, I love this story and I always remember it. She said the forces of good and evil in China at the time uh, were battling and basically, um, basically the forces of evil were winning and all the forces of good were on the battlefield and they were, they were basically dying, you know, they were just laying there dying and the birds uh, knew that this could not happen. Uh, I guess they were good birds. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, they went and got the reishi mushroom and they um, took it and dropped it in each uh, soldier's mouth and they came back and they won the fight. So I thought that was pretty great. And I feel like for people with, struggling with cancer and a lot of different things that are bothering their immune system, uh, that this is a great herb to take, uh, especially even for preventive. Um, I've never heard anyone say it's preventive against COVID. I don't think you can say that. 
but I think you can just say it really is a great immune tonic um, and a great cardiovascular tonic and a great spirit herb. Um, definitely should be helping you even sleep sometimes too, although I think it's uh, probably not one I do right before bed myself. What about you, John? I think you covered it pretty well. Oh yeah? yeah. Is that all you're gonna say? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll just add that, yeah, spirit tonic or in mm -hmm. traditional Chinese medicine, yeah. uh, that modality, that system of health, they call it a shen tonic. <laughs> and that has to do with the three treasures, which oh, are nice. jing, qi, and shen. Do, uh -huh. Are you good at explaining that, Dad? Because I know <laughs> what it is, but I, I'm not going to try and teach it on the podcast right now. Not really. Okay, well, cool. Well, qi, I'll just do it really simply. Qi is like your energy. You know how much energy you have. And jing is how much energy you were born with. And then shen is is your spirit, you know, the strength in your soul and your spirit. So that's all. So it helps all those things. Body, mind, and spirit, basically, right? Yeah, it's my favorite Shen tonic mm -hmm. because it makes me not only be more relaxed in a more positive mood, but it just feels like I'm meditating throughout the day. Yeah. I take it three times a day. Recently, mm -hmm. I started to take it three times a day. And all day, it just feels like a, a, like a living prayer meditation. Yeah. Yeah, so how great is that? It also puts you in touch with your own... I was saying how people feel lost. Um, I think it puts you in touch with your own purpose, like why you are here. Mm. What's your song? You know, what's your, you know, need to express in this life? Who are you? You know, what is your... Um, Helps you discover yeah, your what's dharma. What's your gift? Yeah, your dharma. Yeah, I'm reading that book. <laughs> mm. I love that. What about you, uh, John, for ginseng? You want to talk about ginseng? Sure. Well, Here's first we, could, we should give a description of adaptogens now that we're in the oh, adaptogens. Okay. Go ahead, John. Yeah, so an adaptogen is uh, generally generally the adaptogens are chi tonics, which, which give you more energy. And so if you have more energy, you're able to adapt to stress, to the changing uh, environment. And, um, and so ginseng is really good at that. It gives you a lot of energy. There's actually two kinds of ginseng. Really helps your adrenals as well. <laughs> yeah, unless yeah. you take too much and then Oops. you can uh, overstimulate <laughs> okay, them. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I was, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. There's, there's two kinds of ginseng. Uh, uh, Panax ginseng, which is the, the Eastern uh, Asian ginseng, and, uh, and the word Panax comes from the root Panaxia, uh, or pan that's where the word Panacea co comes from, and a Panacea, of course, is something that's good for everything. Um, mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's revered in, in China. It, it's, uh, so I, I attended a workshop uh, by Dan Mowry. He was the solar ray research herbalist, and he gave a great talk about uh, Panax ginseng that, uh, or and American ginseng. American ginseng is Panax quinquefolium. So ginseng is actually the species. Panax is, is the genus. Um, and uh, the, the Asian uh, ginseng gives you more energy. It, it has two kinds of compounds in it that they labeled RG and RB. RG stimulates the um, RG stimulates the yang, gives you more energy. RB stimulates the yin, so it's more nourishing. And a, a good Panax ginseng has two parts of R, RB and, and one part RG. Uh, I'm sorry, that's the other way. Two parts of RG and one part of RB. American ginseng, Panax quinquefolium, uh, doesn't have any RG in it. it, it so it doesn't stimulate the yang, but it's a very nice and balancing yin nourishing herb. And I believe that we have the right one in America because we are a little over testosterone. And that's the other thing about ginseng, the Panax ginseng. It, it's actually a, a phytotestosterone. Uh, so it, 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 it actually gives you more of that yang testosterone. Um, there, there's imperial roots in ginseng in China that are like 
that you can pay three thousand dollars for. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what they'll, the Chinese herbalists there will do is they'll take an imperial root and, and just soak it in alcohol for like 15 years wow. to extract it. Yeah. And, and then you just take a little <laughs> tiny bit of that mm. and, it, and it does its business. But um, interestingly, the American Revolution was fought not over the Boston Tea Party, but over ginseng. <laughs> the, the tax on tea, which they say that's what it was about, you know, tea at that time was probably five cents a pound. The tax on it was nothing. So that little bit was going to the King of England. But uh, mostly the French trappers were digging up the American ginseng and exporting it. Mm -hmm. Most of it exported to China because they knew what to do with it. Mm -hmm. But that was millions of dollars. So if you're looking for, you know, you know, the movers and shakers in a revolution like that, you don't look for the pennies, you look for the dollars. Well, that's all very interesting. Wow. <laughs> I guess I should take his class. <laughs> and and oh, can ahead. we also, ginseng is for so many people so beneficial yes. for when they're quitting substances, particularly right. when they really have debilitating fatigue and exhaustion and mm -hmm. just no life force. And they just, when people are quitting opioids, this is very common, just no energy whatsoever. And then taking ginseng daily seems to help a lot of them. Could we also, I, I see it's not on your list, what? but Dad, could you talk at least for a minute, just real quick, about Peruvian ginseng, even though it's not really ginseng. Maca is a great one for addiction recovery. Too. Are you talking about maca? Well, the, the, the ginseng I know about from South America is, uh, is uh, uh, suma, uh, which is uh, Fafia paniculata. It's in the ginseng family. And it's, it's the South American ginseng, and the people down there use it, just just like the Asians use the uh, Panax ginseng. But yeah, go ahead. You what about maca, though? Maca gives you a lot of the same uh, results. Yeah, basically. well, maca yeah. is is a root, like a mm -hmm. radish, it, 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 and it's uh, it's, like cruci a it's cruciferous. <laughs> it's, it's in the uh, mustard family, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, what they do in, mm -hmm. in, in Peru and around there is they dig that up, and uh, you it actually, um, it, it the markets, the street markets in Peru, women usually are, are selling uh, a drink of the maca. Mm. And if you ask them, you know, what it's for, and they'll say, well, for the sex, of course. <laughs> um, but it, it really, uh, it, it really, really works. It really works. It's a very, very balancing herb. And, and you can get it in health food stores generally as a powder. Um, mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, it, it balances hormones, uh, and it, it, it relieves stress, it increases energy. Mm -hmm. There's just a really long list of... Um, increases sperm on average yeah. by 300%. Sperm yeah. count and sperm motility. Yeah, so if you want to get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> but actually ginseng and uh, both ginseng and maca and suma, I think, too. Do you think suma is a good fertility herb? I'm not sure. Sure. But anyway, all these are great fertility herbs. They're good for both men and women. Um, the uh, one thing I want to say about the Panax ginseng is you can get a headache if you're already drinking too much coffee and then you're taking ginseng. So don't mix your uppers with other uppers, right? And um, a lot of the energy try a drinks. little bit of it to begin with. Mm -hmm. A lot of the energy drinks, I'm not sure which brands, mm -hmm. but say maybe it's Monster or Rockstar. Mm -hmm. They'll put caffeine and guarana and Panax ginseng and some other stuff in there that's stimulating. Yeah, sometimes stimulation is not always the best thing to. You don't want to be too revved up and sometimes um, some of these adaptogens that are stimulating like ginseng can get, can really get you going. American ginseng though just feeds your adrenals and uh, it's a lot less um, buzzy. That's my favorite kind. <clears throat> yeah. But a little bit in a blend would work really well. Yeah. I actually the first headache I ever got in my life, I've only had two, <laughs> um, was from an overdose of ginseng. I was playing in a, a heavy metal uh, rock trio. Uh, I was the drummer, I was a bass player and guitar player. The bass player and guitar player were uh, uh, taking speed, uh, drinking Jack Daniels and oh. drinking coffee. And so I tried to keep up with them on, <laughs> on ginseng Oops. and I took too much. And uh, it, it, it gave me a headache. 
and I've mm -hmm. never had one before. And it also really, really messed up my digestion. And in fact, I had to tell them, hey, I, I can't play anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, they were speeding, they didn't care, they just went on without me. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I didn't know you could take too much, but I found out after that. Yeah, and I've used it um, when I'm when I'm really, you know, I used to do women's retreats a lot and put them on. And about the second day, you know, I was like, I need that ginseng, you know. And we would make uh, um, Rosemary Gladstar is a famous herbalist. I think I talked about her before. And she has, like, ginseng balls you can make. And we did it with, like, um, gin powdered ginseng and peanut butter and spirulina and a couple other things that are really kind of yummy royal jelly and then we take those and boy would I feel great the whole rest of the night and the next day I'd have all the energy I needed to do anything um, it was great sounds good for yeah. addiction recovery too yeah. those little ginseng balls. yeah those little ginseng balls might be just perfect yeah okay um, do you, yes, some people, uh, oh yeah, astragalus. Yeah, we got people. No, yeah, we got a bunch Move on, more. move yeah. on. So astragalus is one of my all-time favorites, too. Um, to me, astragalus, um, a lot of my students have said who have, have had this as their herbal ally, that it's like getting a hug from the universe. It's like the whole month they feel protected, they feel loved, they feel like supported, they feel you know, just grounded and like um, pretty great. So as a, as a, it's a Chinese herb tonic and it really helps protect your immune system. It protects your, uh, protects you from getting any kind of viruses or bugs. It just helps um, everything in that way. Do you want to say anything, John? Sure, astragalus, astragalus membranaceus. Oh, as nice. Jane said, a, mm -hmm. a Chinese uh, root tonic. Um, yeah, it's interesting how it works. <clears throat> it is somewhat like echinacea in that it's a mucopolysaccharide, which means it's a large molecule mm -hmm. that freaks out your immunity, your immune system, so it sends out immune forces. But it, it turns out to be something not threatening. But if there are some pathogens in the neighborhood, they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> like a, what I always say, like a pickpocket at a cops convention. So. Astragalus, they've done studies with it, with, with people undergoing chemo and radiation. Mm -hmm. and, and what those things do is they trash your immune. So a lot of people uh, end up in those, I won't call them therapies, treatments, end up with uh, opportunistic infections like pneumonia that ends up killing them. In a study they did, people that took astragalus had a five times higher uh, survival rate mm -hmm. from, from those treatments. And uh, so the, the, the Chinese term something external wind. Uh, those factors that, that attack you when you're weak. And, and what astragalus does, you know, what I always talk about is like, I was a Star Trek uh, or a, a uh, fan. And, <laughs> um, and uh, so if the Klingons had this ray that would disable the the, the phasers on the Enterprise, then they could just, you know, beam aboard and take over with a knife. Mm -hmm. But if the shields were too strong, then they couldn't get in. And that's basically um, <laughs> how astragalus works. I talk about echinacea being microimmunity because it helps keep keeps uh, viruses and pathogens out of your cells to infect them. But in, in fact, astragalus increases the, the energy around your body your, your, your aura, if you will, the, the mm -hmm. human uh, HEF, they now call it, human energy field. And it, it, it increases that. I, I liken that to when I was in Hawaii and I had taken some uh, mushrooms, magic mushrooms, paniolus. And we were going to set up the tent and camp, but <laughs> we were so high we didn't. And then at <laughs> dusk, these mosquitoes. We, I, I noticed the, this whole swarm of mosquitoes <laughs> at the same time they noticed me and they came at us and I was freaking out. They got to the edge of my aura and they stopped. Whoa. And it wasn't something I was trying to do. It was something that I was amazed that was happening. <laughs> and they just, you know, they just didn't, they just didn't get into that field. Uh, and that's how astragalus works. It's that powerful. 
could protect you from those things that would attack you from the outside. Yeah, it comes in tongues. It looks like a tongue depressor. It comes like that. It also comes, um, you know, powdered or cut up. But a lot of people like to use the tongue depressor one and put it just put it in their rice or their soups um, so that their immunity stays strong all um, you know fall and winter. This is a great time to do it. Yeah. Um, having said that, there's many doctors that don't want you to use astragalus or anything that helps your um, immune system stay strong uh, during chemo, just letting you know. <laughs> I don't think the Chinese feel that way, but uh, our American doctors have decided that, a lot of them. So just just so you know. Okay. Holy basil is the next one, Tulsi. Holy basil. Ooh, we love this one. Yeah, I love uh, holy basil. It's kind of a floaty feeling for me. Um, I know this one guy used to take it and he would just float around and uh, he would take it, the essential oil in a capsule form which is super strong that way and I wouldn't recommend taking essential oils internally but um, you know they kind of had it down in this formula um, but he said it really worked to just get rid of just that extra anxiety that he carried around from childhood you know and is this an uh, Ayurvedic yeah. adaptogen or is it something like, uh, is it? well yeah it would definitely be Ayurvedic you know okay. it's like the holy basil we use a lot of holy basil in our clinic just because it makes people it's an adaptogen it helps their adrenals it helps their digestion and it just helps them feel good basically it's a feel good good kind for your of skin herb. too ah good so um you know jane was talking about taking essential oils internally and and of course we can do that if you make a peppermint tea you know that has essential oils in it mm -hmm. uh, if you do valerian part of the uh, isovalerianic acid is part of the compound in the essential oil. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to take a lot of essential oil because it's already so concentrated. But in small amounts, it's it's perfectly okay to take essential oils internally. Mm -hmm. the, the interesting thing about basil is in India, where it's Small native, amounts, like maybe one drop? A couple of drops, <laughs> yeah. Um, in depending India- on the, Depending on the essential oil. You should really learn about essential oils before you try taking them internally. But okay. in India, where uh, they, they call basil Tulsi, mm -hmm. but actually Tulsi is a, is a goddess. Mm. So it's, the spirit of the plant is actually uh, revered as a deity. And, um, and what they do is they, they'll actually s sing a little song, say a little prayer as they dance around the plant uh, mm. to exalt the spirit of Tulsi. Wow, that that makes me uh, pretty happy. <laughs> I, I can't get into it, but I know a lot of uh, a lot of the work we do in our preclinic, we get to know the plant spirit basically, and uh, a lot of my you know students have done that, and they've definitely heard um, you know songs while they worked with the plant that they brought back to our community, and it's pretty fun you know to get to know a plant on a deeper level as a conscious being for sure. I know a lot of my students went and you know when they got to know the plant they were supposed to give the plant a present you know and so they asked um, I know two people this one year went to an elder plant uh, which is another herb a beautiful tree and they asked the elder you know uh, what it would like from them and uh, the elder told them chocolate so they went home and made them made the elder tree a chocolate bar <laughs> and brought it back. <laughs> the other thing about Just basil, saying. <laughs> the other thing about basil is that it's, it's probably a, a fairy in that tree. It's <laughs> it's a good solvent actually. So if you have um, for example some people that uh, help to get off uh, alcohol or opiates sometimes use marijuana which is now legal and there's less of a stigma about it. Um, it can be addictive for some people of course. But <clears throat> But the THC that can build up in the lungs and damage the lungs, basil is actually a really good solvent for that. So, uh, so I used to actually when I used I was a professional drummer for 20 years and mm -hmm. I did my share of uh, marijuana in a water pipe, and I would actually put a couple of drops of the basil essential oil in the water pipe. So when that would get down in my lungs, it would help uh, dissolve the. Uh, 
the the THC and resins that would uh, congest in there and, and could possibly damage my lungs. Yeah, I remember it smelled pretty great. Much better than just uh, pot. <laughs> <laughs> How about, um, can you talk about ashwagandha, John, then we'll talk about these. Ashwagandha, yeah, sure. Withania somnifera, uh, ashwagandha. It's a, a, an Ayurvedic herb, again, uh, native to India and the surrounding area. Um, so ashwagandha is, is, is kind of an amazing herb. It's, it's a chi tonic, but um, it, it also helps you sleep at night, and that's what the somnifera is about, somnia. It's in a lot of sleep uh, combinations. Uh, when I when I played in this one band with uh, some young guys, we were, we would jam, mm -hmm. and I we we do uh, we we would do ashwagandha, and they were just the most incredible jams. It, um, it is it's a very connecting. What what they say about ashwagandha is it imparts to the male of the species the sexual stamina of a stallion. We, we actually call it the, the, uh, the honor system, which is uh, get honor and stay honor. <laughs> um, and it actually does work really well for that, for guys. But also at the same time then, it's gonna help you sleep at night. Um, so it, it's uh, a really, really great, it doesn't taste good. Ashwagandha uh, <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually uh, is, is uh, sweat of the horse is how that translates mm -hmm. and it really does taste like horse sweat which is not anybody's favorite flavor but it's a really really wonderful herb you can though heat it up with a little bit of coconut oil and a little bit of honey and then it's not so bad at all it tastes pretty great mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's a, a really hard herb and and so if you if you're trying to um, uh, grind it up to put it in capsules a coffee grinder is not going to do that. We have, of course, a real strong commercial mm -hmm. grinder here. But uh, be, we order it um, as a powder uh, because mm -hmm. it, it, it's not an aromatic herb and it's, it's not a real astringent herb. Astringents uh, decay pretty quickly if you powder them. Mm -hmm. And essential oils dissipate quickly if you powder them. But ashwagandha uh, is okay to, to uh, purchase. And that's what I consider the best way if you're buying it to mm -hmm. get it as a powder if you're going to put it in your own mm -hmm. capsules. Also, John, doesn't it lower cortisol levels? So a lot of people can gain weight and get stressed and, you know, they just can't get their cortisol levels back down to where they need to be. But ashwagandha kind of gets you there. So your habit of being stressed isn't quite as um, intense as it can be. Do you agree with that? I don't know it that way, honestly. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can all look that up, but that's uh, my understanding of it. Uh, we want to we want to um, help you know a couple herbs too for your liver because uh, the liver is so important when you're detoxing, of course, because it's the major detoxifier of the body. So we want to talk a little bit about uh, milk thistle. So go ahead, John, talk about that. sure milk thistle. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know it. it if you look at the plant, it looks like the leaves have had milk spilled over them. Um, mm -hmm. But also, it's a galactagogue, which means it increases mm -hmm. lactation, uh, breast milk production in nursing mothers. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> but also, it's a really powerful protector of the liver. Um, a lot of people think it stimulates liver function, and it, it does to some degree. But the, the main important part about milk thistle is it is a glycoside. Milk thistle is uh, psilomarum, uh, and um, I'm just going to wait a second here <laughs> until he's done with that. Is he done? I guess. So uh, psilomarum is a glycoside in the milk thistle seed. That's the part we use of the milk thistle. And um, psilomarin, actually, that glycoside actually physically coats the cell walls of your liver cells and prevents toxins from entering. Um, in fact, all poison control centers in the world stock MTE, milk thistle extract. It's a concentrated extract of that, of that uh, glycoside. So if you eat, would eat a poison mushroom or something and get to the poison control center on time, 
you can take that uh, MTE and it can possibly save your life. Now, <coughs> I don't want to enable people drinking, but of course if people do drink uh, and get in, intoxicated, what a lot of people don't understand is the word toxic is right in the middle of that word. <laughs> and alcohol, uh, in some studies, uh, you know, the, a small amount of alcohol is actually beneficial for people. If you're an alcoholic, no. <laughs> okay. Um, but for most people, a small amount of alcohol is actually beneficial. I think that's because our society is so stressed. But a larger amount of alcohol, the liver can only uh, process like one ounce of alcohol per hour. If you exceed that, now you're killing liver cells. <coughs> Excuse me. So a hangover is actually from two things, liver cell death and dehydration. So if you take milk thistle seed um, and then don't drink sugary mixes like rum and coke, just coke and wa uh, rum and water if you really are neat, um, or uh, seven and seven, skip this seven up. Those are real high in uh, sugar, which are dehydrating. So <coughs> if you main your maintain your hydration level, um, I had a, a student that, thank you, I had a student that was a maid of honor at her friend's wedding and they went to Vegas, Vegas baby, for the uh, bachelorette party and she took the milk thistle seed and she made the bride take it. She didn't want to. The bridesmaids opted out. <clears throat> the next morning uh, they got up, the, the, this lady and the, and the bride got up and went shopping in Vegas. The bridesmaids who opted out were sick as a dog in bed. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> yeah. One, one other thing milk thistle does uh -huh. that's kind of important. So the, the liver, of course, has a liver enzyme system that, that, that tweaks uh, compounds in their metabolic and other ways. Um, and, but if it, if, if, it gets, if it gets something that it, that it doesn't recognize, and this is the importance of taking things that are natural, but if you take natural things and, and combine them together in unnatural ways, then the liver can't recognize it. And, and so it might be something that's, that, that's kind of toxic to the liver and the body. Uh, so what the liver does, it can't process it, so it kicks it back out again. But then it comes right back, it's called the enterohepatic loop. So what milk thistle does is it quarantines oh, these wow. compounds. Just like if you have a virus checker in your computer and it detects a virus, mm -hmm. sometimes they'll say, oh, you want me to quarantine that? And I always say, yeah. <laughs> but that's what milk thistle does. It, 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 it puts that aside so that it's not going to damage your liver cells and it's not going to, you know, you, you know, the, the way I always look at it, it's like the old westerns where the Indians are like attacking the wagon train and they repel them and it's like they come back again and then they come back again. Well, if you just took the Indians and invited them in, you know, for, for supper, uh, which, you know, quarantines them, then they're not going to come back and attack again and again. The milk thistle also uh, stimulates uh, protein synthesis in the liver so that if there is some damaged liver cells, it helps to right. rebuild them. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's really an amazing uh, herb for the, for the liver. I think the liver is especially important too. I mean, for hormones, for, you know, it just has so many different uh, things. So if you're, you know, if your period's off or your um, just any kind of hormonal imbalance that you might have with skin or anything, you have to have a healthy liver. Uh, one of the ways to have, and when you do have a healthy liver, then your energy is really smooth. You flow a lot better in your life and you're happy. <laughs> and it makes your skin better, which makes you more confident. Right. Self-confident. Yeah, but I mean, it, it also makes you happy. I mean, if you're, you know, you've seen people as they get older, they get grumpy, you know, um, but if they were eating greens, if they were having lemon in their water, if they were eating more raw foods and taking some little liver herbs that are very powerful, actually, as well as, um, you know, as well as just very healing. Um, another one would be dandelion root. And whenever I take dandelion root, um, I know that joy is coming. You know, joy, 
joy um, dandelion for me equals joy <laughs> dandelion root it kind of cleans out your liver and just helps you feel a lot better it also balances your cravings so if you're craving sugar a lot or you're craving um, I'm not sure about alcohol but I expect it's the same idea or just you're craving a whole lot of meat or you know salty cheesy food if you drink a cup of dandelion it kind of balances uh, your taste buds out and you want healthy food so I think it's a real good um, ally that way too besides the fact that it just completely heals your liver and helps your bile and helps you move toxins out through your uh, elimination so yeah dandelion is actually um, <clears throat> available as dandelion leaf which is more of a diuretic yeah. and da dandelion root so the, the genus of dandelion is Taraxicum, which comes from the Latin terax acos, which means a remedy for a disorder. In other words, good for what ails you. It's one of the most powerful, wide-acting, uh, and uh, herbs revered herbs in the world. Right. Um, it, um, and it's a weed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Jane was talking about joy. And the, of course, the color of the flower of dandelion is yellow. Mm. And in color therapy, yellow is for uh, for joy. Mm -hmm. um, so a, uh, a a tea of dandelion, it's a really powerful blood purifier. Mm -hmm. In other words, it stimulates the liver's function, and especially mm -hmm. if the liver function is diminished because of inflammation. And of course, that's itis. And if that's inflammation of the hepatic organ, the liver, that's hepatitis. Mm. And that doesn't necessarily have to be infectious. You can get uh, hepatitis from just a, an injury, inflammation of the liver. Mm. And of course, when it swells up like that, it's such a vital organ that it's not able to do its function. And that's why you get sick. That's mm -hmm. why you feel really horrible. But dandelion root is uh, the, the most powerful uh, herb for for hepatitis. Mm -hmm. I, I had a, a, a student whose son was really super sick with infectious hepatitis. Uh, she was ready to take him to the hospital, um, but uh, he said, call John. Uh, and so she called me and uh, I, I recommended uh, the dandelion root. And, and she gave him the strong tea of that for a couple of days and canceled his appointment. Mm -hmm. We live near the health food store in Ocean Beach, the co-op Jane mentioned, health, People's Food Co-op. And at, at one time, pretty much all the people in the store were probably sharing joints. And they all had <laughs> hepatitis. And <What>? um, <laughs> So they called me up, the local herb doctor, and I recommended uh, the dandelion root to them. And, and that worked great as well. Uh, that, that student whose son had really bad hepatitis ended up writing a book about her experience Whoa. about about uh, dandelion and a uh, booklet i should say um but, but a book nonetheless a book nonetheless yeah because she was very amazed at, at how quickly uh, that turned that around uh, what what the chinese say about uh, herbs like dandelion also burdock um, yeah. and yellow dock is they clear blood heat through the liver right. they stimulate the function of the liver so that the liver can clear toxins from the body and what herbalists say is if, if the blood is clean, no disease can reside in the body. And dandelion root is one of the strongest herbs to do that. You have to be careful with dandelion root though. If you have weak kidneys, it is such a powerful diuretic, it could actually damage you. I had a student that uh, came up after class one night and showed me this recipe that she'd made after I was talking about it and, and asked me, if that was okay and how much she should take and I said yeah it's fine um, she came to class the next week and said I almost died last week I said what how come <laughs> she said I drank that tea you told me about well I learned a good lesson from that she didn't tell me nor did I ask uh, that she was under the care of an acupuncturist mm -hmm. uh, actually a friend of ours um, mm. and uh, she had called this lady up and, uh, and and said I'm not feeling good and she said what have you been doing and she told her, and she said, stop drinking that and come in right now. Hmm. She actually gave her an acupuncture treatment to jumpstart her kidneys. They were shutting down because they were being overstimulated. Otherwise, she could have ended up on dialysis. So you really want to be careful 
with a powerful herb like dandelion <clears throat> that that you know what you're doing. You mm -hmm. know, if, if there's weakness uh, in an organ like the, the kidneys, the last thing you want to do is stimulate them. You want to nourish them. Mm -hmm. And then as you get some energy to work with, you can begin to, to encourage them with a more stimulating herb. You know, one teaspoon of dandelion root uh, would be fine for just about anybody. You know, one time a day or a couple times a week or whatever. I mean, you really don't have to worry too much about dandelion unless you're taking like an ounce of it, you know, three times a day or something like that. I mean, it's really a pretty user-friendly. It's one of our um, basic, you know, herbs that we use in the apothecary for almost everyone. Just that lady was taking way too much uh, for, for her, her condition. System. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So don't be too afraid of dandelion. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And its cousin chicory can be uh, used in the same way. Okay. Chicorum. The the uh, gypsies. They're were, bitter. We're real <laughs> big on, um, on on chicory. Well, thank you guys so much, mm -hmm. mom and dad, for coming on for mm -hmm. both of these episodes. Now you can tell the audience um, where they can find you any kind mm -hmm. of exciting new projects you're doing, any products and services that you guys have, website and all that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thank you, Matt. We really uh, have enjoyed, and thank you, audience. We've really enjoyed being able to share a little of what we um, know to be very useful. It's been our life work, and we really, really, really want people to um, get stronger, get healthier. Um, and we know that your mind gets better when, you're, when the health of your body gets better. So you'll have more positive thoughts, uh, more happier feelings uh, as you take care of your body. So we have a website for our school, mm -hmm. selfhealschool.com. And you can find uh, classes that we offer on there. We're actually uh, located here in San Diego, California. Uh, we're doing a lot of our classes during this uh, Delta variant now uh, online. Um, and, and so wherever you live, you can um, plug in and, and get these classes. And the, and the great thing about Zoom classes, online classes, is that we record them all. So if you miss a class or you want to review a class, after every class that we record, the next day we send out the recording to people. We wish you love and we wish you health. See yep. ya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we teach classes not only in herbs, but also in nutrition. And uh, we have a teacher that comes in that teaches aromatherapy. In, in November, we have a, a, a friend of ours uh, that is going to teach a class in crystal healing. Mm -hmm. And um, we offer a lot of other things too. Um, so just check us out. And as Jane said, uh, be healthy, be well, and take care.